All right, welcome to training hierarchy. We often get questions when it comes to fitness, nutrition, hence all of the things, right? And I would say like I'm the, the first thing would be like kind of explaining what hierarchy means because maybe everyone doesn't know or at least we can give you our definition. So hierarchy means we'll say list of priorities. Yeah. What I mean, should you be focusing on? Mm -hmm. right when it yeah. comes to your training things that are most important how they're how they're uh, stacked on top of each other yeah so these are key things to focus on when implementing a fitness routine i know we all want to fit this food in our mouth but we also want to fitness <laughs> our bodies right mm -hmm. this is the training hierarchy period pyramid there we go <laughs> period that's it that's it done, done. But with anything, as you are probably becoming aware or maybe are not aware, success and mastery come from building a solid foundation. And we are all about a solid foundation, doing things in a sustainable manner uh, because it's lifelong changes that you're trying to make, right? And so when it comes to training, we created this pyramid so that you know how you should be progressing up it. So it starts, starts at the bottom now here. Uh, with the most important factors um, going up in succession. And so the first thing that is at the base of the pyramid is consistency, enjoyment, and adherence. And then you level on top of that, sleep and hydration. On top of that, walking daily activity. On top of that, resistance training. And then the pinnacle is cardio. And it's funny because like if you think about what maybe many of you have done in the past, I know I've done in the past, is sometimes we... We think about it in the opposite. Most people say, oh, like, what am I start doing? I'm just going to start running or I'm just going to hit the gym. And then like they start building on the other stuff later, whereas like um, you'll have so much of a greater, more solid foundation if you start this way and work your way up, because the reality is you won't always have time for everything. And so when you can't do it all, this is where you refer back to this and say, all right, cool. What what level do I need to stay at to be able to maintain and continue to make progress depending on life? Yes. All right, so let's talk about the base of the pyramid. Consistency, enjoyment, and adherence. It's all about that base. That base. Who's that base? Who's that? Who's that? Oh, Nick, is it Nikki? No, I don't remember. I don't think so. It's all about that base. There no you trouble. <laughs> there you go. Anyways, consistency. So what is something that you can consistently and sustainably do? And a lot of times, as he kind of briefly touched on before, is the the easiest thing or maybe the the thing that people lean on is like i'm just gonna do all the things i'm gonna start working and doing it but asking yourself like is that something that i can do on the regular that you see yourself doing for the rest of your life and like with anything it could be you know at least a couple months that you want to be able to stick with something and so it's not something like you're not necessarily saying oh if i'm gonna start to commit to it forever yeah but like I, I would say a good gauge is like, if you can't see yourself doing it for the foreseeable future, then you may have to reevaluate. All right, cool, what's going on? Am I making the right choices? And what can I do for the foreseeable future uh, without feeling like I'm gonna you know, shoot myself in the face? Yeah, and then asking yourself, how many days can you do that? Should you, like if you've never done a workout or anything um, in the past, or maybe it's been, you know, taken a little bit to get in the, the swing of things, maybe you're a busy mom now, maybe, you have a busy work life, you're a completely different person. What you used to do is not what you can do now. Um, and so asking yourself, like, how many days a week am I willing to do whatever it is I'm going to do? And then enjoyment. What do you like to do when it comes to movement? And with that movement, is it supporting your actual goals? So for instance, if you're like, I wanna build muscle, and then your go-to movement is running, it's probably not the best option for you. <laughs> and then going back to adherence. So will you actually do it? You know, we, we had uh, one person and they're like, oh, you know, I got this rower and I'm just going to start rowing. And they're like, I, I used to do it. I loved it. Yeah. They just couldn't get back on a they row. They just couldn't do it. I like, no matter like what it was. And it's like, well, the we'll say the bottom line ended up being that they were still paying for the rower and so they wanted to get their money as worth ultimately and that's what they did in the past but when you if you're, if you're a new person it's okay to change it up if you bought something and you're not getting use out of it then there's no point in it right to some degree there's no there's no point in continuing to pay for that mistake like no. it served you at one point great fantastic even if you 
um, you know, are still making payments towards that investment, like realize that it helped get you to where you are today and then uh, move forward. But um, all of these things kind of help with each other. Like if it's something that you enjoy, you'll probably do it. And for a sustainable amount of time, uh, and then you'll you'll probably find yourself doing it more and more. It's not that you need to do something every day, but um, if you can figure out the things that you like, it doesn't feel like someone's twisting your arm or it doesn't feel like uh, something that's super crazy that you have to force yourself to do. You're not challenging your willpower because it's something you look forward to. Like yeah. One of the things we used to relate it to and still do is uh, it's almost like, a, you know, your favorite TV show or a Netflix show. It's like, uh, your your significant other or yourself or someone like they don't have to talk you into doing it in the evening because it's something that you enjoy. So like finding a way of movement that's similar to that where it's like, all right, cool. What's your what's your preferred uh, you know movement? So that way it's something that you look forward to doing. You actually like it. Um, so then it you doesn't set feel, the time aside. Yeah, it doesn't feel like pulling teeth to get it done. Because I'm sure there's shows out there that would be a nightmare to watch. The shows that you enjoy. So very similar. Pick the one that you enjoy. So that way, like you look forward to it. And this also plays a factor like when we're asking, you know, how many days a week can you consistently do this? Because if, for instance, you're like, I'm all in, I'm, I'm working out five days a week and the workout program that you pick is five days a week, it's built to could be completed five days a week. And if you end up like not being able to do it five days a week and you're only able to do it two days, maybe three days, you're not going to get the full benefits of what the program is geared towards. Yeah, and so if you, if you pick something that's five days a week and you only do four days a week, then like realistically, um, you will be delaying or slowing down 20% of the results over the, the lifespan of the program. Like if you pick something that's structured for three days a week, you can only work out three days a week and get 100% of the benefit or the results. Yeah. Next level, sleep and hydration. Who would have known? How does the sleep and play a factor when it comes to training? I heard when you drink a lot, you sleep better. Is that what you're talking about? Or? Wait, wait. Uh, that if you drink a lot, you sleep better. <laughs> I don't know about that, but let's start with sleep. So sleep, it is a necessity. It is not a luxury. I know it's, if you're a person who has, you know, a newborn baby, sleep is definitely going to be a little bit more of a luxury because you're dependent on that person's schedule. But being consistent with the amount that you're able to get with what you're able to get will make a difference. And then it may even take a, a moment to, you know, look at your schedule and see how you can revise things to get more sleep. But in general sleep, it's imperative for growth, recovery, and performance for your brain, your muscles, your entire body. In the gym, you are any type of workout, you're breaking down muscle. And so in order to grow that muscle, you have to give your body sleep and rest and recovery to be able to build and grow it. And then to be able to actually perform the next time that you show up in the gym. So the questions you'd want to ask is, you know, are you being consistent with your sleep? Are you getting seven to eight hours of sleep? And if, you know, you're staying up till the boondock hours to social media to watch TV, like maybe you need to shift some priorities if working out and changing your physique is a priority over that. Um, then it comes down to hydration. And so with hydration, that is vital to life. Unlike being able to survive, you know, many days without food, water, we can't survive very long. It's like literally like a couple of days, depending on what your storage is like. But water is essential, you know, for temperature regulation, nutrient transport, your joints, pooping and digestion properly. Oh. And asking yourself, you know, how much are you drinking? What does your pee look like? Could you drink your pee? Is it near straw colored? But making sure that you're getting, you know, proper sleep and hydration is going to support the workouts that you are getting. Walking daily activity. Movement is essential to life. I mean, when you think about it, our bodies are constantly moving. Even if we're sitting, the cells are moving. And without moving, we're literally just dying. Uh, I mean, have you ever, even especially as you age, when you, when you sit down for even like one hour at a time, at least for me recently, I'm like, because I move so much when I'm sitting for an hour and then I get up, I'm like, oh God, this is what it's like to be getting older. Like the joints are stiff, but then once you start moving, you're like, okay, this is, this is good. I got this. Um, but when it comes to walking and daily activity, it, it actually aids in fat loss. Who would have known? It improves mood, creativity. It helps decrease inflammation, helps with recovery from what you're doing from your workouts. And so the question becomes, how neat are you? And when we're talking about neat, we're talking about non-exercise activity thermogenesis. 
which is basically all of the activities that aren't planned into your day. So essentially they, depending on the person, depending on their activity level, depending on their jobs, all those different things, it's going to take up about 10 to 50% of your energy expenditure throughout the day. You actually have a higher energy expenditure than exercise when it comes to neat. And that includes everything like she's doing now. Undulating. Yes. When you talk, tapping this is your, neat. Ta tapping your feet when you're doing whatever, fidgeting with something in your hands, like all of that um, is energy expenditure. So, like, you know, if that's if that's high, that's typically the people that uh, I'm sure you know some of them that you're like, oh man, like it doesn't matter what they eat, they just stay skinny. It's because their their need is potentially higher, right? Whereas, like, oh, um, as a person, they're just moving around a lot more than most people. So it's just like they need to be able to to have higher calories to be able to support all of the things that they're doing on a regular basis. So I'm going to get my, uh, our cats for an example. Oh, so we moved into a, a four story condo and they never lived in the stairs. And when they were staying with my mom and we were traveling, it was like one floor. They had a very small room to like move around and whatever. In, and they started gaining weight. Now, since we've moved here, they're moving around a lot. And it's like, it's like triple the amount they feed them. And oh my and gosh, so much weight. food. Like, so Jesus. much food. Yeah. And so when it comes to walking and activity, asking yourself, you know, how many steps do you regularly get? If you have a desk job, um, you know, doing extra things where, uh, to increase your activity, such as uh, taking it at maybe a longer or different route to get to the water cooler, um, setting an alarm to get up every hour, uh, cleaning and doing chores at the house. I <laughs> mean, maybe you don't have time for that if you want to do something else. Totally get it. Sometimes yeah. it's also just like, oh, in the morning, you know, like rather than sitting and enjoying your coffee, go for a little stroll or enjoy your coffee. After dinner, walk or uh, after dessert, stroll or something like that where it's like, all right, cool. Like if you can, and typically it's a little bit easier if you tie it to different things you do throughout the day. If it's like, oh, like coffee and a stroll and the first cup you get sit down and enjoy, second cup, go for a walk if you drink multiple cups. Um, and then same thing. It's like, oh, maybe in the evening, uh, you know, after work or after dinner, if you're by yourself or if you have a, you know, friend or loved one, it's like, oh, cool. This is something that we can do to, uh, you know, share about our day while moving around. And if you are a person that is, has a very active job, so for instance, like, let's say you're a mailman. Oh. You probably already get a shit ton of stuff. Isn't that redundant? A mailman is not like, you can't be a Yes. No. Wait, okay, what? A male then? Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Scott, Scott anyway. <laughs> oh, she's <laughs> Louise. Uh, anyways, anyways. So if you're a person who already has an active lifestyle, I, I will tell you right now, increasing your steps is probably not the most realistic for you. So just keeping up with that activity and you'll probably need to adjust other areas of your life um, in order to, if you are on like trying to lose weight, put yourself in a coat further calorie deficit. But anyways, walking and daily activity, super, super important. It's something that's very simple. It's very easy to do, but it's also important that you establish a baseline in doing this. And this is where our activity monitors come in, our garments, uh, because you know maybe you, you had a hard workout at the gym and you're like, oh my God, it was leg day and I just wanna sit on the couch and do nothing. So guess what? You do nothing and walking actually helps with recovery. It helps increase that fat burn. Um, and so having an activity monitor will allow you to see like how much am I averaging, you know, a day, a week, and then you can make the decision on like, okay, I get X amount of steps. I'm going to increase uh, by 10 to 20% this week and see how you can do that. And sometimes it's just a matter of like, you know, I a, a actual difference between uh, perceived output and actual output. Because a lot of times it's like, oh, I feel like I move around a lot. And then you actually start tracking like, oh, mm -hmm. some days I don't. Like when we used to own the gym, like when we first owned the gym, we owned and lived in the gym. It's like, oh, we're in the gym moving around all the time. Uh, when we started tracking our steps, like Jesus Christ, we only moved like very little. We were like 2000 steps because we were just in a small, crazy. small area. Um, and if you were to ask us back then, it's like, oh, we're considerably active, moving around all the time. But it's like when we looked at it, we actually weren't. And so sometimes it's just, it, it helps put things in perspective uh, because perception isn't always reality. So it helps align those two things to be a little bit closer to each other. This is where data comes into play. The facts don't lie. <laughs> All right, let's talk about resistance training. So cha changing, uh, this, this is important for changing your physique and your strength. 
Um, obviously, like moving around a lot or being in caloric deficit will help you, you know, fluctuate your weight. So you can lose weight or gain weight depending on those things. Uh, but this will allow you to body build or build the shape and the physique that you're looking for. Uh, it also aids in blood sugar stability, strong bones, increased confidence. Uh, um, then also moods improves uh, brain and heart health as well. So a um, lot of lot of enhancements or things that you can benefit from this outside of just looking better. Uh, and then uh, a structured program also helps uh, you be consistent and, and remove some of the guesswork. Typically, if you have a structured program uh, or something of uh, you know resistance that you lay out, you go and you push harder because you're not just like bouncing around or wondering what to do. Having clarity and direction can improve drive. And then if you're going to you know if you're going to do the same exercises each week, it allows your body to become accustomed to those exercises. And it allows you to see how you're progressing and making sure that you are progressing with those exercises. Because there's all kinds of things like, oh, I gotta like muscle confusion or do all this stuff. But it's like realistically, like mastery comes from doing things over and over again. So even if you're doing the same handful of movements over and over again, you'll get better and better at them. Versus if and when you switch them up all the time, uh, you're having to relearn or actually learn for the first time how to do these, how to do these properly. So it's almost like you're starting and stopping all the time. Whereas like if you get in a solid routine, um, stick with the same thing for uh, a decent amount of time. It allows you to progress so much better because you're eliminating the learning phase. I mean, to be honest with you, we're just going to throw it out there right oh. now. Like, realistically, the best of the best do the same thing all like over, same shit, and over and over again. And they rebuild every single time. Now, I will tell you. That can be boring as hell. And we all have, well, not we all, but a lot of us, you know, if we get bored of something or I need to change my routine or I need to whatever. And if it's something where you need a change because you've done it for like, oh, you know, I've done this for like three months and I just, uh, my motivation's down, I can't do it, then definitely change up your routine. But really shoot to stick with something for at least three months. And even to with, get the benefits of the program. And even with that, realistically, like you'd be surprised at how much it changes your workup out if you just uh, change the rep schemes, right? So like mm -hmm. if you go from this a little more strength-based to hypertrophy-based, you can do the exact same exercise. The only yep. difference is one um, that is, you know, way more reps is going to be very different. It can cause or, you know, bring a lot of excitement to your working out. So like it's not necessarily have to rehaul or overhaul the entire sure. thing but just switch up the way that you're doing the exact same exercises and you'd be surprised how, you know, invigorating it can be. Yeah, that could be just enough of a change to reinvigorate you. Cardio. Tip the of the iceberg. Tip of the iceberg. So when it comes to cardio, it is exactly as it sounds, cardiovascular. And so hence, it improves your heart health. It also helps with the regulation of your blood sugar, helps you sleep, same thing with exercise, helps you sleep, improves uh, your brain health, helps lower blood pressure, strengthens your immune system, enhances your fitness performance. Because I will tell you right now, when you're doing hypertrophy and you're, if you're going for 15 to 20 reps, there is essentially a cardio component to that. <laughs> for sure. So I, I pass out because I'm out of breath. I'm trying to do Oh so yeah, to totally, well. totally. And so this is where um, cardio, we typically say for the majority of the population to introduce last, because as he was touching on in the previous slide, cardio will change your weight. And so if you're only doing cardio, it is going to make you a smaller version of the body that you may not probably be. are not very satisfied with. Whereas the resistance training will allow you to actually change your physique, get stronger, um, build muscle, all of those things. And so the, the nice part about cardio is obviously all of these benefits. Uh, and it actually helps for people who need a little bit of a bigger deficit or push in their program. It can help increase a bigger deficit for fat loss. But this is a fine tune type of a thing where yeah, you well, don't want to just do as much cardio as possible. <laughs> well, so like the reality is like if you build a solid foundation with everything else that we've been talking about, um, and then you get to the point where you need or want to sprinkle cardio in, it makes the results even better, but your results in, in a whole or large part aren't dependent on this. Like right. so many people they, they start with cardio because like, oh, I want to get amazing results, but like they have to work so hard in order to build a solid foundation if cardio is the base, whereas like this is you can make real like 
full transparency, like we don't do very much outside, like we do steady state walking, but we don't do any like crazy cardio. Uh, and so like, if we needed or want, wanted to ramp up results, we could sprinkle in cardio, but that gives us the, the freedom to be able to choose where we can kind of cruise for a while. And if we ever need to turn it up, adding in a, uh, you know, 50 to 30 minute cardio session a few times a week, isn't that difficult uh, in comparison to trying to, you know, do 45 minutes to an hour of cardio every day to get amazing results. Yeah. And be because whatever you are doing to get the results that you get, you have to continue doing those things unless something else changes. And so same thing, like you could add cardio in your, into your routine, but if it's a staple um, and you want to continue losing fat and you remove cardio, then it doesn't necessarily, you have to create a further deficit in your nutrition um, or increase your step activity or something else has to give. And then doing it, you know, whereas cardio is an add-on uh, at, at the very end allows you to be able to establish a solid routine. And if you need to push hard and do cardio, um, it can help expedite results. And then when you take that off, you're able to cruise or maintain, right? So it's like, all right, cool. Adding it in at the end, uh, or as something on top definitely helps because uh, you don't have to do everything because like you're not going to be able to, you're not going to continue making that type of progress. If you back off with the cardio, then you're able to maintain with seemingly way less effort. Yeah. All right. So some questions to ask when it comes to the pyramid. What are my goals? You know, what, what am I looking to do? Am I looking to build strength, lose weight, uh, build muscle? What can you consistently do each week and enjoy doing? And how much can you do? So how many times a week can you work out to do this? Uh, how can you get enough sleep and water to make sure that you're supporting the workouts that you are doing? What is your weekly activity and step goal? And how can you achieve this? Like, what's your baseline? Is increasing your steps something that you want to do? Uh, what program are you going to follow that will support these things? And making sure that you are logging and tracking will help to see that progression. Will I implement cardio? If so, how much and when will you decide to implement it? And then making sure, like, as we said, what does my nutrition look like? because nutrition is going to be the biggest like key mover driver um, with supporting and achieving your goals. Cause you can train like a beast, but if you're eating like an asshole all the time, it's not gonna be pretty. Yeah. So when life happens, how do you use this to adjust? For instance, let's say you got shitty sleep, you got no sleep. Um, Best things to do is focus on hydration, focus on getting some more sleep, uh, focus on making sure that you're, you know, moving around and getting steps. If maybe you do have a um, more hypertrophy styled workout where you have higher reps, or maybe it's a cardio day because you're doing cardio, that can be a little less stressful on your body. So you can do that, but ultimately like allow your body to rest and hydrate and move. Same thing like if we're thinking about, okay, I'm traveling. So if you're traveling, uh, the questions would become like, am I gonna work out when I'm traveling? Can I, can if I'm doing a four day a week program um, and I'm only you know uh, going on vacation on the weekend, can I stack my workouts Monday uh, through Thursday before I go on my trip so I don't have to worry about working out on my trip uh, or, and, or I'm just gonna take my trip off and then focusing on making sure that you're getting quality sleep when you're there, that you're um, staying hydrated, that you're active, because depending on the type of vacation that you're doing, you could be moving around sightseeing, whatever. And a lot of like for us, as we, as we travel around, we like to just stay fairly close to a lot of stuff and then just walk. So it's like, oh, it's easy to walk here or do that or uh, explore, move around. So like just because you're on vacation doesn't necessarily mean that overall activity has to be down. And it doesn't mean that you have to work out or move in a way that takes away from your vacation, trip, travel, whatever it is. Exactly. What if you're sick? Please don't go to the gym when you're sick. Don't spread your germs. I will tell you that as a previous nurse, don't spread it. That's not caring. Um, but once again, if you're sick, you know, focusing on hydration, focusing on sleep. If you're kind of to that cusp of I'm getting better then making sure that you're, you know, slowly building up that activity as your energy levels increase. If you're super busy, this comes down to like, I used to be able to do all this. I should still be able to do all this. 
but you know what you did in high school and what you do now you don't have the same job you don't have the same attitude you don't have the same energy you're a completely different person whether that's increased or decreased um, and i would say like this this is probably a weird correlation but it's kind of like you know obviously it depends on your age but uh you know and as you as you get older you look back and you're like oh man when i was in my 20s i used to be able to drink all night and just roll right into work and have no problems but as you get older it's like oof things are different my body needs this or that or whatever and like that happens with training. Like maybe back in the day, you could train all day, every day and you would bounce back. But like, as you get older, your body doesn't respond the same way. So taking a look at it and realizing, all right, cool. What's going on now? How can I address my current situation versus looking back and be like, oh, I used to be able to kill it like this. Yeah. And so like, if you're busy and you originally set out the plan of four days a week and you haven't been consistently doing four days a week or maybe you don't enjoy it then how can you change can you cut it down to three days a week is that going to be more feasible for your schedule um, and so tailoring things like that is the best way we would say to utilize it in conclusion as we say build a solid foundation and then you're going to traverse up the more that you're able to make it a habit a lifestyle and be consistent with anything that you do because that consistency is what reinforces um, the skills the habits it amplifies the things that you are doing and if i was going to bring it back to that you know uh, you what heard the would you rather master one kick a thousand times or a thousand kicks one time you'd be more proficient if you mastered that one kick a thousand times right you'd be a badass for it um you know whip it out whenever and then adjust accordingly. And of course, follow a solid nutrition regimen that supports your goals. But if you have questions, we are here. Make sure to submit them. Hopefully that gives you a little bit more clarity when it comes to finding your optimal fitness routine and how you should adjust when life.